Uh, الله بالخير جميعا. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, very important uh, symptom presented in our patients, in, in outpatient, in uh, inpatient, and in ER. And pediatricians uh, should be aware how to approach uh, this problem, which is cough. Basically, I'm going to talk about chronic cough, how to approach to, uh, to it. And then I will um, speak about specific cause of chronic cough, which is uh, usually overlooked, underdiagnosed, and undertreated. So my objectives are hopefully, inshallah, at the end of the lecture, we can distinguish between acute and chronic cough in children. Uh, we'll be able to identify specific cuff pointers requiring uh, further ev evaluation and effectively begin management of non-specific cuff and suspected uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis. And we'll be identifying children who need evaluation by a specialist. So <clears throat> as we all know that cuff is very uh, common complaint presented at uh, physician visits, it accounts for around uh, 29 million annual outpatient visits and the prevalence of chronic cough in those, um, uh, uh, in those patients and children is 5% to 10%. The prevalence in Saudi Arabia, I find um, an, a new article published in 2019, sorry, 2020, uh, done in Najran city in Saudi Arabia. They examined the approach of primary health care physicians there to chronic cough and the prevalence there was 25% including adults and pediatrics. Um, a cough is, uh, is uh, really a burden to the health system. We can uh, see that more than 80% of parents had sought five or more medical consultations for their uh, child with chronic cough in the preceding one year. And around half of them have taken uh, to a doctor more than 10 times in the same period. Um, and also it's, uh, it's costly. In the United States, approximately $2 billion per year is spent on over-the-counter uh, cough medications. Additional costs are paid in physician visits, labs, and radiological tests, prescriptions, school absence, and parental leave. Um, cough also is related to considerable morbidity and it's impaired the quality of life of the child uh, affecting his sleep, play, school performance, and also causing anxiety to parents. So let us uh, look at this case scenario. It's a very common um, scenario we see it in our clinics. Um, a three years old male attends your clinic with his mother who is concerned about his persistent cough and rattly breathing that have both been present and persist over the past six weeks. So how you would approach this child? So we need a detailed clinical history and thorough physical examination which will guide our diagnosis and management. There is high quality evidence that uh, having a systemic approach to management of chronic cough in children using a pediatric specific cough algorithm will improve the clinical outcomes. So to follow these uh, algorithms, we need to classify our, uh, the cough in, um, uh, in several ways. So cough is classified according to the duration of symptoms to acute and chronic, according to the character of the cough uh, to dry or wet, and according to the presence of uh, identified of uh, having any identifiable etiology for the cuff and it's it's classified to specific or non-specific cuff and we'll come to that what about acute cuff acute cuff defined as a cuff less than two weeks in duration and usually it's secondary to viral upper respiratory tract infection uh, it's usually self-limiting require only supportive management However, in acute cough, we need to look at uh, and assess if there is a patient has any signs or symptoms suggestive of serious pathological condition like pneumonia or foreign body aspiration. Um, acute cough caused by upper respiratory tract infection generally resolve within one to three weeks only. Uh, there is a prospective cohort study of, of acute cough in preschool age children presented to primary care showed that 50% of those children recovered in 10 days and 10% of them were symptomatic with cough at 25 days. So based on this natural history of the acute cough, the, the definition of chronic cough um, uh, was, uh, came to be, the, the definition of chronic cough is defined as 
the presence of daily cough of more than four weeks in duration. Okay, so this definition was recommended to ensure that all children with cough lasting gr greater than four weeks are carefully assessed and not quickly dismissed as a post viral cough. Uh, why it's important? Because uh, chronic cough may suggest a serious underlying condition in which the early diagnosis would uh, improve the outcome. In a multicenter study that used a cough algorithm, serious potentially progressive underlying respiratory illness like bronchiasis, cystic fibrosis, was documented in 18% of 346 children. Uh, also, there's published study that systematically assessed outcome of children who had acute cough persisted for more than four weeks. Um, they found a new and serious chronic lung illness, uh, lung disease in up to 30% of children. So how you, we evaluate those patients with chronic cough? The evaluation should include a thorough history, physical examination, chest, x-ray, and when appropriate, spirometry. Collectively, this, we call these as specific cuff pointers. So if we have any specific cuff pointer, uh, it's, uh, they are diagnostic clues that uh, may identi identify any underlying etiology for the chronic cuff. Presence of these uh, specific cuff pointers will classify the chronic cuff as either specific in which there is likely to have an identifiable etiology or non-specific, uh, in which there is uh, unlikely to have identifiable, uh, identifiable etiology, and it will guide our evaluation and management. These are the specific cuff pointers we have to look at it in history, physical examination, and test. So starting with the, cu the cuff characters, it will give us a hint about the diagnosis, for example, barking cuff, paroxysmal cuff, um, uh, history of cardiac abnormalities, if the patient has chest pain, cyanosis, if the patient has daily wet or productive cough. Um, uh, we say to wet because most of the children uh, couldn't expectorate uh, the sputum. So if they can, we call it productive cough. Um, having dyspnea, whether at rest or exertional, history of feeding problems like uh, vomiting, uh, regurgitation, choking, uh, it will give us hint about possibility of aspirations, for example, if the patient has fever, history of foreign, aspiration, foreign body aspiration, hemoptysis, history of previous lung disease, if there is any history suggestive of uh, immune deficiency or family history, if the patient taking any medications uh, known to have uh, to cause a couple of side effects, um, if there is history of uh, suggestive of neurodevelopmental problems, which uh, as we know, it cause uh, hypotonia and predispose to aspirations. If uh, we, we need to take also the immunization history and uh, risk factors or exposure to patients with pertussis and tuberculosis. Also recurrent uh, pneumonia is very important. In examination, we look for ab abnormal breath sounds, abnormal cardiac exam, chest wall deformity if the patient uh, have failure to thrive, clubbing, uh, hypoxemia, or tachypnea. And for the test, we are doing basically the chest X-ray and uh, spirometry if the age is appropriate. So specific cuff pointers, if we have anything positive in history, examination, or findings in chest X-ray or, or uh, spirometry, it suggests that there is underlying disorder and further diagnostic evaluation is indicated according to the, uh, to, to the signs symptoms which we have, and usually it's need uh, pediatric pulmonologist evaluation. It's important to, to say here that common etiologies of chronic cough in adults are not presumed to be common causes in children, okay? And their age and clinical settings like their country, region are taken into consideration when uh, we evaluate them. It's a very important point as uh, you remember the study which was done in Najran, looking at the approach of uh, primary health uh, care physicians there, it's including uh, uh, general pediatricians, family physicians, uh, general medicine and ER. And they found that 47% of them, they are approaching children and uh, adults in the same way. So they are using the same approach. 
and uh, they are different. Even the definition of chronic cough in adults is different than in pediatrics. The causes are different and the management is different. So here we can see there is uh, many causes of chronic cough in children. I will not go through it. Um, so going back to our case, the mother gave us more information. So initially he had low grade fever and nasal discharge, both resolved in two days and seven days, respectively, but the cough persisted. The cough is wet in nature. Uh, he's well grown, fully immunized, and has no history of aspiration or recurrent sinopulmonary infections. There is no family history of chronic pulmonary disease, but father is a smoker, child attends child care. Uh, in examination, he has spontaneous wet cough, no signs of upper respiratory um, uh, infection and no other abnormal physical signs. Just X-ray shows only perihilar changes. So based on these informations, how you classify the cough of this child? If can I hear from any of the residents? So based on the three items, whether it's acute or chronic, uh, wet or dry, and specific or non-specific. Okay, so this cuff is chronic wet cuff with no other specific cuff pointers. So uh, what is non-specific cuff? We said specific, so we have uh, specific cuff pointers. So sp non-specific cuff is typically a dry or uh, non-productive cuff in the absence of specific cuff pointers with normal X-ray and spirometry. It's, uh, it's important, I need to tell you here that there is different in the, guide, in the current guidelines. Um, the previous CHIST guidelines and the Saudi pulmonary, uh, the pediatric, Saudi Pediatric Association, the previous guidelines are considering the uh, non-specific cuff as either dry cuff or wet cuff. So they classify it to either dry or wet. But the new guideline, the new CHIST 2020 guidelines is considering wet cuff is um, uh, in the specific cuff pointer. And then it's subclassified to whether it's isolated wet cuff or associated with other specific pointers. And they consider non-specific cuff as dry cuff. So this is very important. Um, a point to know uh, before we go to the algorithm. So in most children, non-specific cuff is post-viral cuff, which resolves spontaneously with time. And usually it doesn't um, uh, indicate that uh, the patient has serious etiology. But as I mentioned before, some patient uh, might have a, a serious abnormality. So we have to carefully look uh, uh, after the, those patients. At first presentation, there might be an overlap with non-specific cuff and uh, non-specific cuff, the specific cuff, and the normal or expected cuff. Okay, so children with a chronic cuff should be re-evaluated again. Okay, until a diagnosis found with resolution of the cuff is po if possible. So how will approach those patients with non-specific cuff? Uh, first, we uh, no need to do any uh, additional tests, okay? So no routine tests. Uh, it's recommended basing the management on the etiology of the cuff, okay? So we don't do or give empirical uh, management, okay? No empirical approach at treating, for example, uh, upper airway cuff syndrome due to rhinovirus condition, uh, gastric severe reflux disease or asthma. Okay, and this is common in our practice. We sometimes we give empirical treatment, so it's not recommended to give any uh, empirical treatment. And I will tell you later why. So, if an empirical trial is uh, used based on a feature consistent with hypothesized di diagnosis, a trial should be uh, of a defined limited duration in order to confirm or refute the hypothesized uh, diagnosis. In each visit, the guidelines recommend to, um, to, uh, that we have to check the, if there is any exacerbating factors such as environmental tobacco smoke or any 
uh, environmental pollutants and uh, intervention should be initiated. Also, we need to address the parental uh, anxiety, their concerns and their expectations regarding this cuff. So here I'm going to highlight why we shouldn't give empirical treatments in certain uh, condition, like GERD. Uh, GERD is a, a common cause of cough in adults, but it's not commonly identified as a cause of pediatric chronic cough. There is little current convincing evidence that it might cause an isolated chronic cough without GI symptoms. However, proving causality is difficult because um, a cough might precipitate the reflux and having reflux might precipitate cough. So it's difficult to prove the causality. But as we, we all know that infants is usually having, it's common for them to have a physiological reflux, but it's not common for them to have cough. So an empirical treatment for GERD in children with non-specific isolated cough is not recommended. What about upper airway disorders? So it is again a common cause of cough in adults but there is insufficient, insufficient evidence that post-nasal drip resulting from either allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, it's uh, uh, cause uh, chronic cough in children. So the current guidelines are against uh, giving empirical therapy. What about bronchiolitis? We know bronchiolitis is a very common uh, disease in uh, children, but there are few data specific to chronic cough post bronchiolitis. So the suggestions of the CHEST guidelines is to deal with it uh, uh, as, um, as uh, any chronic cough. So um, we have to manage it according to the CHEST guideline for managing chronic cough and asthma medication shouldn't be used. What about asthma? Although cough can be a symptom of asthma, as we know, most children with isolated cough don't have asthma. So the current child-specific asthma guidelines caution against diagnosing asthma based on cough only. Because while almost all children with asthma have intermittent cough, wheeze, and or exercise-induced symptoms, only about a quarter of those patients have asthma. Also, asthma-like transient clinical syndrome may occur after viral illnesses like uh, respiratory syncytial virus and other viruses. Um, when the airway profile have been studied and examined in children with isolated chronic cough, very few children with airway inflammation, uh, they find there is very few children with airway inflammation persistent with asthma. So they, include, they concluded that chronic cough is not associated with the cell profile suggestive of asthma in uh, uh, isolation. Uh, in isolation and should not be treated with prophylactic anti-asthma drugs. There is also a cross-sectional community study of, uh, of uh, 1,178 children uh, reported that persistent cough in the absence of wheeze differs from classic asthma and it resembles the asymptomatic population. And they concluded that cough variant asthma is probably a misnomer for uh, most children in the community who have persistent cough. However, in few children with isolated non-specific dry cough, asthma might be a cause, particularly, particularly if the child has atopic features. So if the patient has eczema, allergic rhinitis, family history of asthma, they, some my, yeah, minority of them might have uh, only isolated cough. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to exclude asthma in young children whom we can't do the spirometry, we can't do the challenging uh, test to, to see if he, they have exertional dyspnea or uh, just uh, discomfort. So sometimes a trial is appropriate for asthma management if the patient has clinical feature or atopic features, family history suggestive of possible asthma. Um, however, a randomized placebo controlled trial of inhaled albitrol and inhaled corticosteroids in children with isolated cough showed no benefit compared to placebo. So if we decide to give a trial of therapy, this trial should be effectively administered using a spacer, should be given over a predefined time frame, only for two to four weeks, and we have to have a concrete therapy in points. 
and those patients need to be evaluated. This is, this is the algorithm of uh, management of chronic asthma. I hope it's clear for you. Uh, so any child is less than uh, 14 years of old has chronic asthma. We need, as I mentioned, to assess initially a presence uh, of uh, specific cuff pointers, evaluate the tobacco smoking and uh, the parental expectation. If we find that this patient has any specific cuff pointers, we will go to the next algorithm. If the patient has non-specific cuff, which is dry with no, no, uh, point, no cuff pointers, so it's suggested uh, in the initial presentation to give a watchful period for two weeks. Uh, because this patient, as we mentioned, may be a, a normal cuff, so a secondary or post-viral cuff. So we'll give two weeks for evaluation. Then after two weeks, if it's resolved, well and good. If the patient develops specific cuff pointers, we have to, to go for the algorithm of specific cuff pointers. If the patient continue to have uh, dry non-specific cuff, we'll give the family the option of giving trial of therapy. So uh, what we give, we give inhaled corticosteroids, uh, 400 uh, microgram glutazonide or equivalent. And we give it for two to four weeks only. So after that, we assist the patient, okay? Uh, if the patient improve, it could be the period effect or the treatment effect. So we will discontinue the medication. We'll see the patient after two weeks. And at that time, if the symptom recur, so this means this patient most likely has asthma, so we'll uh, uh, give him the, we will treat him. If the patient after two weeks is okay, this means it was the effect, uh, of, it is an period effect. If the patient didn't improve after two weeks of trial, so we'll discontinue the trial. Okay, fine. The next, um, uh, if the patient has specific cuff pointers, maybe this is more clear. Uh, here we subdivide or subclassify it to um, dry cuff and wet cuff. If it's dry cuff and patient have symptoms suggestive of asthma will be treated accordingly. If the patient has no specific signs or symptoms suggestive of asthma, he should be evaluated by pulmonologist looking for any underlying disease. Uh, if the patient has wet cuff, here we classify it or subclassify it to whether it's isolated with cuff or with cuff associated with other specific cuff pointers. If it's uh, isolated with cuff, the diagnosis of protracted bacterial bronchitis should be considered. If the patient has other signs or symptoms, so this patient needs to be evaluated by a pulmonologist for any possible underlying cause. So just to relax after this algorithm, but uh, don't sleep. So back to our uh, scenario, this patient, I said, has chronic wet cuff with no specific cuff pointers. So the diagnosis of protracted bacterial bronchitis should be considered. In the coming slides, I'm going to, to discuss the, the the definition of uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis, how we diagnose and manage. It's very important uh, diagnosis and usually it is overlooked and uh, underdiagnosed and misdiagnosed as asthma. And so it's undertreated. So for isolated wet cough, diagnosis of uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis should be considered if the patient has no other symptoms and signs. Um, as I mentioned, frequently underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed asthma or post-viral, so inadequately treated. Uh, misdiagnosing this um, problem as asthma resulting in inappropriate and often high doses of inhaled corticosteroids. In one study from England found that 59% of children with protracted bacterial bronchitis were on regular asthma medication when uh, the diagnosis of uh, PBV was made. So the prevalence is, um, we don't know actually the true prevalence in communities. Most of the studies are done in, in, the, in hospital bases. So um, there is a single and multi-single studies in Australia and Turkey. They diagnosed 
uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis in 11 to 41 percent of children uh, referred to a specialist respiratory clinic. And it's found one of the most common cause of chronic cough in children. So how we diagnose it? It is a clinical diagnosis uh, when all of the following criteria are met. First one, presence of chronic cough more than four years, weight or productive. Second, absence of any specific cough pointers and the resolution of cough after two to four weeks course of uh, appropriate oral antibiotics. Currently, it's subclassified. We can see here in the table that uh, it's subclassified to PBB clinical, which uh, the same um, uh, criteria which I just mentioned, PBB micro, in which those patients have uh, bronchoscopy and, broncho broncho and broncho-alveolar lavage with significant bacterial growth. So they have microbiological evidence of uh, the infection. And then the PBB extended. Um, this term used when the patient need to, to, to have four weeks course of antibiotics. So they call it PBB extended. The current uh, broco, uh, protected bacterial bronchitis when the patient has more than three episodes per year. So talking a little about the history of protracted bacterial bronchitis, it's, it's uh, described as diagnostic entity in 2006, and then recognized as a common cause of chronic with cough in children, and has been incorporated in several cough management uh, guidelines. Um, however, it's, it, it, there was a, it, it's not a new entity, and uh, PBB-like conditions were described in the last century. In 1940s, the possibility of a link between chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis were raised, including suggestion that uh, it could be interrupted with intensive uh, antibiotic therapy. And um, since 1980s till 20s, there were uh, many studies look at uh, those uh, kind of patients, uh, their clinical pathological features. So our knowledge is uh, increasing rapidly. So what's the clinical features of uh, those patients? Usually uh, it's a preschool uh, disease in patient uh, age zero to six, but it can happen in any age group, infants, young children, and adolescents. The youngest uh, age was, uh, in, um, I find it in a Chinese study, uh, was two months old. Uh, those children generally appear well, as I mentioned, so they don't have any uh, specific uh, cough pointers, so no clubbing, no other signs of separative lung disease. The scultation of that lung may reveal a rattling sound suggestive of uh, airway secretions. Um, however, many parents, uh, around 41 to 81, reported wheezes, but auscultation confirmed wheeze by a doctor was unusual. Uh, the chest X-ray should be normal or showing only peribronchial uh, changes and spirometry should be normal. Sometimes the symptoms of uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis are confused with those of asthma uh, and uh, occasionally they might coexist. So the patient will have both asthma and protracted bacterial bronchitis. What, what helps to differentiate the two pictures? The type of cough. It's wet in protracted bacterial bronchitis and often a dry or nocturnal in asthma. And also the response of antibiotics in patients with uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis. However, in some patients, if uh, they, uh, we have unsatisfactory effect of anti antibiotics, we have to consider also the diagnosis of asthma, where uh, because fin it, 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 uh, finally, um, in some patients, the diagnosis of asthma was made. It's more common in, in boys and in those who attend the child care. In one Australian study, they said that the attending a child care increased the prevalence by 8.4 folds. However, in the same study, there was no correlation or uh, relation between the, the PBB and infections, which were common in young group like uh, uh, ear infections or uh, sinusitis. And there was no relation to tobacco smoke the prevalence of uh, atopic features are similar in patients uh, with or without protracted bacterial bronchitis. Uh, it's well known that uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis is associated with uh, large airway lesions. 
Trachea uh, and or bronchomalacia was reported in 74% of cases. Uh, why is that? Because the airway malacia cause an impairment of normal pulmonary defense mechanisms. So uh, the, the, effect, the effectiveness of cuff will decrease. So this will interfere with normal mucus movement leading to, uh, to stasis of the mucus, bacterial overgrowth and causing uh, infection and inflammation. This infection and inflammation will be disposed to malaria and a vicious circle. So as I mentioned earlier, the diagnosis is uh, clinical. No instrumental examination are needed. If the child can expectorate, sputum culture should be performed. Um, the bacteria commonly identified from the bronchialveolar lavage are the commonest three bacteria are Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Moraxilla catarrhalis. Having a polymicrobial infection is, uh, is uh, uh, happened in 30 to 50 percent. So it, it's uh, common to have uh, polymicrobial infections. Uh, what about viruses? There were many studies uh, saying that the virus, virus infection may play a role in predisposing those patients to having uh, bacterial, uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis, especially as I mentioned, it's common in uh, children who attend the child care. And they said uh, adenovirus is the, the most one uh, related to that. However, there is a new study uh, published in 2019 saying the reverse. So they, 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 they said that the, uh, they check the 10 common viruses in the bronchoalveolar lavage of uh, the patient and control, and they were the same. So, uh, and there was no adenovirus on, on, on those uh, patients. So based on the present uh, conflicting data, we can say that there is no certain evidence that protracted bacterium bronchitis may be virus induced. <clears throat> what is the uh, pathology um, be behind it? What happened in protracted bacterial bronchitis? There will be persistent bacterial infection with intense neutrophilic uh, inflammation and innate immune system activation in the airways. So how will we treat it? Um, there is high quality evidence uh, in children with chronic wet productive cough that using appropriate oral antibiotics will improve the cough resolution. It's treated with a prolonged course, two weeks course of antibiotics, typically amoxicillin carbolinate, which will cover the commonest bacteria very well, but uh, um, cephalosporins um, uh, might be used also and other, bacteria, other antibiotics in case of uh, sensitivity to amoxicillin. If the wet cough persists despite two weeks of antibiotics here, an additional two weeks of antibiotics can be prescribed to complete a total of four weeks. So no need here to change the antibiotics or sometimes some physicians are discontinuing the antibiotics and giving asthma medication, thinking that, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is asthma, not uh, bacterial bronchitis. No, we should complete the course for four weeks. Uh, why some patients needing uh, extended um, course to four weeks? Maybe because of uh, biofilms produced by bacteria in which the bacteria causing a, a symbol and, uh, and enclosed in a surface so that the penetration of antibiotics will decrease so the activity of bacteria will increase. So they need more uh, time. And also the having a tracheobronchomalacia uh, found to be a reason in patients who need uh, extended course of antibiotics. What if the treatment fail? Uh, there is study report increased likelihood of bronchiectasis on chest uh, CT scan in children with chronic cough and fail to resolve despite four weeks of oral antibiotics. So if patient is not uh, responding to four weeks, those patients need to be referred to pulmonologist for further evaluation and management. This paradigm, paradigm was um, uh, proposed in 2008, and uh, it's slightly represent uh, uh, that the protracted bacterial bronchitis, chronic separative lung disease, and bronchiectasis are a spectrum of uh, disease with different ends. Started with protect, simple protracted bacterial bronchitis and ending 
with severe bronchiectasis. So uh, many children with protracted bacterial bronchitis will improve with no sequelae. Uh, but if untreated or the patient has recurrent attacks, subgroup of those patients will uh, have a, a chronic supportive lung disease and subgroup of chronic uh, patients with uh, chronic supportive lung disease will go for bronchiectasis. So this uh, study is a prospective longitudinal study looking at patients in a tertiary hospital and uh, following them for two years, looking for the, uh, the risk factors of developing bronchiolitis. So they had 161 children with protracted bacterium bronchitis, almost half of them, they have recurrent episodes more than three times per year. And they found that uh, one in 12 of those patients developed bronchiolitis within two years. And they found, uh, they concluded that there is two main risk factors of developing bronchiolitis, which is uh, infection with Haemophilus influenzae and having recurrent episodes of protracted bacterial bronchitis. So I reached to my conclusion uh, in children 14 years and younger, chronic cough is defined as the presence of daily cough for at least four weeks. Strong evidence supports using systematic approach to guide the diagnosis, testing, and management of children with chronic cough. In children with chronic cough, management must be based on the etiology of the cough and no empirical uh, management. Based on strong research evidence, the use of uh, pediatric specific cough management algorithm improves clinical outcomes. Protracted bacterial bronchitis is a common cause of persistent wet cough in preschool children worldwide, and it's frequently underdiagnosed and inadequately treated. Clinical diagnosis of uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis is enough to start an empiric two weeks therapy with amoxicillin calvinic acid. Protracted bacterial bronchitis is associated with a future diagnosis of bronchiectasis in a subgroup of children. Uh, and the main risk factors are infection with influenza and recurrent uh, protracted bac bacterial uh, bronchitis episodes. So children with protracted bacterial bronchitis need to be monitored over time and to consider further ev evaluation in those who have risk factors. Thank you very much. So the floor is open for any comment and uh, questions.